Well, hey, everybody, I can't believe how fast this week has been going. I love this season of the year, the fall. It's my favorite. We are in the book of First John today for our devotion uh, in uh, chapter 2. So I hope you have your Bible and something to take some notes with. Um, and today's uh, devotion uh, will be a little more theological than, than, than typical because in, in, in verse 2, it just raises some questions where he says in, in, in chapter 2, verse 2, he himself, referring to, referring to Jesus, he himself is the propitiation for our sins. And right away, some of you are asking, what is propitiation? He's the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for those of the whole world. This is talking about Jesus' atonement. Now, I want to talk a little bit about what in theology is referred to in, in church history as general atonement versus particular atonement. General atonement is the idea that Jesus died for everybody. Particular atonement is the idea that Jesus died only for those who are going to be saved. In, in Calvinism and Reformed theology, God chooses who will be saved. Some say he chooses who will be lost. Others say, no, he only chooses who will be saved and doesn't make a choice toward those who are lost. To me, that's just semantics because to not make a choice is to make a choice. But Calvinism, Reformed theology, God chooses who's going to be saved. And historically, they would say Jesus' death was only for those who are going to be saved. So it's particular atonement. He died just for those particular individuals. General atonement is the idea uh, and, and it's what uh, I believe and most Baptists believe, that Jesus' death was for everyone. Now, in this verse, before I explain propitiation, I want you to notice something. That Jesus himself is the propitiation for our sins. Who's our? Well, John is writing this. He, he's it's referring to all believers. John and other believers. So me, you, those of us who are followers of Christ. So Jesus himself is the propitiation for my sin, for your sins, for all of us who are followers of Christ. But then he says in verse 2, but also, in addition to that, but also for those of the whole world. Jesus not only is the propitiation for the sins of those who are followers of Christ, those who are saved, those who will be saved, but Jesus is equally, at the same time, propitiation for the sins of the whole world, which involves everyone. This is one of the reasons, among many in the New Testament, I believe in general atonement, that Jesus died for everybody, not just those who are going to be saved the way Calvinists tend to believe. Now, propitiation, what is that? In ancient times, in ancient religions and secular usage, I'm not talking about the Hebrew religion or the Christian religion and secular or, or re, secular usage and secular, you know, non, non-Jewish, non-Christian religion. Propitiation is the idea that a God, a deity is mad. He's angry and you have to appease his anger. And so you would sacrifice someone or an animal uh, when people would make human sacrifices even as silly as it is, you know, in King Kong, they were trying to appease King Kong, you know, the big gorilla. It's the same idea. Here's this angry God. We're trying to appease that God, and so we're going to sacrifice somebody for him. That was the secular, the non-Jewish use of, of uh, propitiation, atonement. And there's a sense of that in, in what the Bible teaches about it as well, but it's, but, but it's different in that the biblical usage is this. Sin creates a barrier between us and God. And in the atonement, Jesus himself, rather than asking someone else to make a sacrifice to appease God, Jesus, by dying on the cross, and as Paul says in Corinthians, becomes sin for us, it's as though sin was punished on the cross, the consequences of sin were paid by Jesus on the cross. He died in our place on the cross. It's literally him taking our place. And in so doing, he, he removes the barrier that's between us and the Father, between us and God. So he makes atonement for us. It's an, it's an act of love. And he did that for everybody. So Jesus' atonement propitiation dying 
is not just for you know a particular group, those who are going to be saved. It is for everyone. And it's and and it is sufficient for everyone. It is available to everyone, but it's only applied to those who receive him. He himself is the propitiation. And the way it is applied in my life and in your life is when I receive Jesus, atonement, that atonement becomes a reality for me. Um, there, there's no difference in what Jesus did for those who are saved and for those who are lost. He died for both. The difference is not in what Jesus did on the cross. The difference is in our response. And those who respond to Jesus, then they receive the benefit. Those who do not respond to Jesus do not receive the benefit of it. Has anybody ever given you a gift card? Christmas, birthday, graduation, and uh, you never used it? Back in the day when they had expiration dates, you waited too late and it expired? Um. But if you'd used it, you could have. In a sense, and maybe it's not a perfect analogy, but in a sense, Jesus' propitiation, Jesus' atonement for us on the cross is like that. Here it is. It's, 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 it's good. You can use it. It'll work. But you have to use it. So the difference is none in what Jesus did on the cross. He did it for everybody, those who are saved, and those who are not that's what he says here. He's propitiation for my sin, for our sins, and for the whole world. Nobody can intelligently argue the whole world doesn't include every human being. They have to twist themselves in word knots to get around that. But we have to believe individually to cash in the atonement, so to speak, for it to be applied to our lives. So... Um, Again, be thankful that Jesus is willing to be the propitiation for your sin himself. He didn't ask you to pay for it. He paid for it. Be thankful for that. And and remember, that is available to everybody in this world. Everybody in this world. The only difference between you and lost people is you believe and they haven't yet. So go out and share the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ with them. That's what he wants you to do. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow.